So one practical aspect of the atmosphere is what is the wind doing? And, uh, you know, is it calm or is there some wind? And all wind is is basically the relocation of air or the relocation of gas particles. And the reason um, air or gas particles want to relocate has to do with pressure. So we need to talk about both of them together. Um, so this is just a slide to kind of show you that um, wind can have its positive consequences. So wind is as that um, that air or gas is relocating, it can also provide a force to go ahead and relocate your sailboat. But the other thing down there in the bottom you see is wind can, um, depending upon um, when the wind is occurring or how fast the wind is blowing, it can be um, very abrasive and difficult to navigate. We're going to talk um, ultimately about um, oceans and ocean currents, large ocean currents because actually um, the interaction between the oceans and the atmosphere is an important one. But um, the reason there are um, ocean currents has to do with the surface wind um, for the most part. So, so one of the things about air pressure we already have talked about, I'm going to kind of remind you, oops, let me show that. So if you remember back in Unit 1, we talked about um, something you already know, that if this is the Earth's surface, and you climb a mountain, the air gets thinner. And we talked about, actually, if I'm going to kind of draw a box up here at upper elevations, the density, or how kind of packed the air particles is, is pretty sparse, OK? And so this is low P, low pressure up there in general. Now, all pressure is is basically those gas particles are banging around, OK? And so pressure is how much oomph they have, how much they're banging around. So um, if we kind of look uh, what we call vertically at what kind of um, the density of the gas particles down here at the Earth's surface, we talked earlier that actually that's where the air is most dense, uh, mostly nitrogen, 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, and then some variable gases. But down here, it's most dense, and, and the collectively, all those gas particles provide a, um, a high pressure, high P. Okay, so that's kind of the vertical distribution of atmospheric pressure all the time. So we need to talk about units of pressure. And as you air up your tire, you probably air it up um, according to um, units of PSI. And that stands for pounds per square inch, PSI. Basically, um, how much pressure um, are those gas particles exerting when you put them in your tire? Well, in meteorology, we need to use different units of pressure. And um, these first two that I have listed here are most important. So when we start looking at weather maps, and we've looked a little bit at weather maps, but um, you're going to see these, these isopleths, these isobars. Okay, this is like a weather map, and you've seen these circles before. And if those are in units of pressure, usually they are in units of millibars. Okay, so this is the weather map. The other common unit of pressure in, um, in weather is inches. And if somebody says it's inches, uh, like 30.5, that would be really high, but like 30.0 inches, they mean inches of mercury in a mercury barometer. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like. But um, so these are the weatherman. So I'll just kind of put internet, because that's where I need the weatherman, internet. Um, so here at uh, the Earth's surface, Okay, because we know atmospheric pressure lessens as you go up in elevation. In general, it'll vary from day to day and from location to location. But um, in terms of PSI, we're running about 14.7 PSI, okay, banging on us, those nitrogen and oxygen and a little bit of water, vapor, um, carbon dioxide. In terms of millibars, um, you're looking at about 1,013 millibars in general. In terms of inches of mercury, you're looking at about 29.92 inches of mercury. So this is a table from your textbook I think does a good job. Kind of side by side, we see inches of mercury and we see millibars. Okay, so those would be equivalent pressures. 
And so, of course, the way you look at this uh, gauge here is this is high pressure and this is low pressure down here. So to just kind of generally get a sense for what is high pressure, um, here we've got a couple of record highs. Um, the record high worldwide was excuse me, 1,084 millibars. The record high within the United States was uh, 1,064 millibars. Um, the other thing, though, probably more important, by the way, I guess one of the things that striking, strikes me is they don't seem all that high. I mean, they're high, but if you compare 1,084 to 1,013, you know, but it has a fair, it has a great consequence. Um, my pen, my uh, thing just stopped working. Now, uh, I want to mention um, uh, anticyclones, okay? Anticyclones, and I'm not sure why my little pen doesn't want to work. All right, this is going to look a little ugly. But if you see on your weather map an H, okay, and oftentimes it'll be an H with kind of, it'll look like a kind of a loose bullseye. And then as you kind of go out from that H, these are what we call isobars, um, connecting locations with the same pressure. But that in general, that weather system we call an anticyclone. And it sounds scary, but usually anticyclones are kind of calm weather, kind of hot. Um, so so uh, let's see. Then we have kind of typical sea level general um, atmospheric pressure. You've seen that number, 1,013 millibars before. Inches of mercury is about 29.92. But it's frankly our low pressures that kind of bring us up some nasty weather. So just like if you see an H on a weather map, that's an anti-cyclone system. If you see an L on a weather map, that is a cyclone or a cyclonic system. And here in the, the middle latitudes where, uh, where we live, uh, most of the United States is in the middle latitudes, um, oftentimes those lows bring with it what we call a weather system called a mid-latitude cyclone. So we'll be talking more about that. So low weathers are usually a little bit nastier. Speaking of nasty weather, um, here we have down here, you're familiar with um, hurricanes, you know, where all hurricanes get our blood pressure going a little bit, don't they? Um, hurricanes, um, let's see if I can draw it over here. You know, uh, from a satellite image, oftentimes the clouds will kind of have this sort of kind of spiral arms, and these are spiral rain bands, apologize for the kind of ugliness of this, but there's my spiral rain bands. And it has what we call an eye of the hurricane, and, and it's kind of neat, we'll talk more about it, but this is, it has like an eye wall with these intense thunderstorms. And in the center of the hurricane, I'm gonna go ahead and put an L. At the bottom, in the middle of the eye of the hurricane, at the Earth's surface, is a low pressure. And when it comes to categorizing how intense a hurricane is, Actually, the lower that low, then the more intense the hurricane. So you can kind of see Hurricane Katrina wasn't as intense as Hurricane Wilma. And then down here, the last one is the lowest ever recorded um, pressure is actually kind of related to a hurricane in different types of the world. Where is my thing? In different types, there it is. In different, in different parts of the world, excuse me, they call hurricanes by different names. So in different parts of the world, they call it a typhoon. So typhoon tip had actually the lowest uh, surface pressure um, ever recorded, and that was 870 millibars.